Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. So, I'm someone who was born in Vietnam and then moved to the United States, California to be exact. And in this video, I wanted to explain some of the differences that I've experienced between living as a child in Vietnam and then my experiences growing up in California. Keep in mind that this is just from my personal experience. I'm not speaking for everybody, right? Everyone is going to be in a different situation. Everyone will have grown up in a different environment. I'm just talking about my personal life. So to start off, there's a lot of differences between the physical house that I lived in. So in California, there's, you know, a sink, a bathtub, a toilet, things like that. But in Vietnam, I didn't have those things. No toilet, no plumbing, no sink, no bathtub, no hot running water, no kitchen really, none of that. So what happened is, in Vietnam, instead of a toilet, we had to like basically squat down to go to the bathroom whenever <laughs> you know we needed to go. We didn't really sit on a toilet or anything, and there's no flushing, there's no lever to just press and then you, you flush the toilet. You actually have to take a scoop of water and then pour it onto the hole that you just squatted on and that's how you quote flush. <laughs> so it, it's really different because over in the United States there's toilets everywhere. There's even public toilets like when you go into a McDonald's or whatever public place. Um, a lot of the times there's toilets available everywhere but in Vietnam it was very hard to find a toilet well, anywhere where around where I lived, especially in public areas. But even if you're at home, even in the house, there's no toilet in a lot of places. As for bathrooms, there wasn't really any bathtub or shower head or anything like that. How we took showers was I would go into the stall and then there's a big basin of water and then I would take a scoop of that water and pour it on myself. So I would just continuously scoop water and pour it on myself over and over, and that's how I took showers. And how did I get that water? Well, in the backyard of my grandpa's house, there was a well, and we basically had to get water from the well, put it into a big tub of water, and then take the small scoop and scoop the water from the small tub and pour it on ourselves. In California, things were much easier. All you have to do is like pull a lever or turn a knob and then you just have water. You could even make it cold or hot water. You could change the temperature. Over there in Vietnam, I didn't have anything to immediately change the temperature. I just had to use whatever water that I had in the tub of water. As for plumbing or sinks and things like that, we didn't really have that. Like I said, we got water from a well and we basically had to like scoop up water or carry water around. My grandpa, what he did for drinking water was he had two large like jars and he would put them outside whenever it rained to catch rainwater and then we would drink rainwater. And if there was extra, he would just put a cap on top of the jars and put it inside so that we could save the drinking water for later. Over here it's much easier, you know, you got filters, water filters, and I have filtered water in my fridge right now. It's cold, I could just go and get it whenever I want. I don't have to order, you know, bottled water or catch rainwater or anything like that. And there were no sinks over in Vietnam either. There was basically, you just pour water onto your hands, <laughs> or you would put your hands into a little like basin of water to wash your hands. Over here you could turn on and off the sink. So just the physical uh, layout of the house and things that are available, they're much different. The kitchen also, over here um, we use a stove, right? Like just a stove to cook on, you could put pots and pans on top of it. But in Vietnam, we didn't have a giant stove and oven and things like that. It was like a portable stove. The one that you put like a little small gas can in and then you turn it on or off. The kind that you would use on a camping trip over here in the United States. 
but then use that as their main stove over in Vietnam. Also, a refrigerator. Over here, almost every household has a refrigerator in their kitchen or maybe they have a mini fridge in the room. But over in Vietnam, I don't think that electricity was strong enough or maybe it just cost too much to really run a fridge all the time. So as far as I remember, there was no refrigerator when I was living in Vietnam. Over in the United States, four door cars are the norm. But over in Vietnam, people drive things like motorcycles and mopeds, scooter bikes, I think, things like that. But four door cars, they're not the norm. There's no like full size sedans over there. Not really, unless you're a foreigner and you want to drive around in a taxi or something. But the, for the people who live there, mainly they use like things like motorcycles and mopeds. I remember when I was in Vietnam and my uncle was taking me to church and I was riding behind him on uh, his motorcycle and while we were driving, some people were going in the opposite direction even though they were pretty much right next to us. So it was crazy. People just kind of go and drive however they want to. Over here in the United States, roads are pretty much paved everywhere. However, where I was living in Vietnam, there were dirt roads everywhere. In fact, a lot of the times, my family members would drive me um, on their motorcycle and we would literally be going past food stalls on a dirt road and just basically just trying to nudge our way through the dirt road. Sometimes it would get wet and it would get muddy. Sometimes it would be hard to really get out of the mud and things like that. It's really tough compared to the United States. Over here, there's not really a lot of dirt roads and muddy roads that you have to really worry about, at least where I'm living in California. As for the weather, the weather in California is very dry. There's a dry heat and there's not really a lot of moisture. However, in Vietnam, it was very wet almost all the time, very humid. Whenever it rained, it would be it would be like taking a hot shower. That's what it felt like. And when it was sunny, it was like a wet heat. I would basically be sweating and it would feel like I'm in a sauna. California is really known for its weather because the weather is very mild all year round. Even when it gets hot or cold, it's not too hot or not too cold. So it's generally pretty mild throughout the year. The things that I did for entertainment as a kid were very different in Vietnam than in California. For example, in Vietnam, there wasn't really much to do. Some of the things that I did for fun was, for example, I took a stick and I took a bicycle wheel and I would spin the bicycle wheel with a stick and I would run along the bicycle wheel as I'm spinning it with a stick. Sounds fun, right? <laughs> or we would like throw rocks at each other. Another thing is sometimes I remember tying a string to a beetle and basically keeping the beetle as a pet until I got bored of it. But that's very different from what I did for fun in California. So when I first moved to California, we didn't have really a lot of money to go out and do things for entertainment. Something that we did was ride around in shopping carts. So me and the other kids, we would basically get in a shopping cart and push ourselves around in the shopping cart. And that's what we did for fun. And at the time, it was fun. I was riding around the shopping cart like, wee! It was very fun to do. Later, I think I upgraded to like, uh, my mom and my dad, they bought like a small little Lego car or something. And we would ride that down a little slope. But yeah, we would like get in something and then ride it. That's basically it. On top of getting in something and riding it, we also rode gated entrances. My brother and I, we would go to this gated community next to our apartment and we would basically wait for a car to go in or out of the gate and then hop onto the gate as it was moving, <laughs> opening and closing. It's very dangerous, of course, and kids should not do this. However, we were poor living in poverty and we didn't have much money to do things for fun. So that was one of the things that we did. We waited at a gated entrance and waited for cars to come in and out and hopped onto the gate and rode it as, as it was opening and closing. Another thing, and probably the main thing, that me and my siblings 
did for entertainment was watch TV. Some of the shows that I watch mainly were on two stations, Fox Kids and Kids WB. Some of the shows that I really liked were Pokemon, Power Rangers, Digimon, Yu-Gi-Oh! Oh my goodness, there were a lot of old things that I used to watch too. Street Sharks, uh, Monster Rancher, Beetleborgs, oh my goodness. There were so many different things, different shows that I watched. And I would hop on, I think, every Saturday or so and just watch all of the cartoons. Sometimes I really envy the kids that are growing up now in wealthy families who grow up playing with iPads since they were little kids. I remember a story that one of my college professors taught me. My professor said that his son, who was a baby at the time, was using an iPad, right? But when he handed him a physical book, he tried to scroll up and down the book, the physical book. He tried to scroll the, the physical book as if it were an electronic device. So I feel like kids today, they grow, they grow up being so used to using electronic devices that they treat them, they treat everything like it, even if it's a physical book. <laughs> I thought that was pretty funny. Another difference is language. So my first language was actually Vietnamese. And then after I moved to California, I took, I took ESL, which is English Second Language. So one of the main differences between English and Vietnamese is that Vietnamese is, it depends a lot on your tone um, and the way you say the words. So for example, ba, that means like the number three. But if you say ba, which is like an old lady. so. The way you say it can completely change the meaning of what you're saying. But if you say something in English like Apple, 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 like no matter how you say Apple, it still means the same thing. But in Vietnamese, if you say it a different way, it completely changes the meaning of the word. Another main difference between my life in Vietnam and in California is that in Vietnam, we did everything on the floor. So whenever we ate dinner, we wouldn't have a dining table or chairs or anything like that. We would just sit on the floor and the food would be on the floor. And then we would just take the food that we want to eat and then just eat it. And another thing is sleeping. We also slept on the floor. There was no mattresses, no bed frame, nothing like that. We would, if anything, lay out like a bamboo mat and then sleep on that, but still, it's still on the floor. And the floor in my grandpa's house, it was not carpet or tile or anything like that. I think it was just straight up concrete, like hard concrete. It was not very comfortable. After my family moved to California, we used dining tables, dining chairs. We didn't do things on the floor anymore. We actually sat at a table and ate at the dining table. And we would take whatever we wanted to eat and eat while sitting at the table. Much different than sitting on the floor and eating. Also, where we slept was different too. When I was little, I slept on a bunk bed, not the floor. And then when I got a little older into adolescence, I had my own bed, no longer a bunk bed. I slept on like a bed on top of like one of those bed frames that have drawers that pull out so you could put clothes in them and things like that but yeah over in california i slept on a bed i didn't sleep on the floor one of the stories that my sister would tell me is that when i was a baby i fell out of my crib and landed on the floor now if this was the united states where things are like carpet or tile i would have been seriously injured however guess what the ground was in the house i was living in in vietnam it was literally just mud. <laughs> Can you believe that? So I was lucky. Because I fell down into a house where the floor was just mud, I didn't really get injured that much because the mud was soft and I landed in soft mud. Therefore, I didn't really get that injured as a baby when I fell out. Lastly, I want to talk about the perceived wealth inequality. Over in Vietnam, I didn't really feel like I was super poor compared to all my neighbors around me. Everyone was sorta all poor, like we were all kinda on the same level, that's what it felt like. However, after moving to California, I live in Orange County, 
And what's strange about Orange County is that there's super poor people living right next to super rich people. And I feel like this is the same in LA and some other parts of California as well. So there's a lot of perceived giant gaps between people's wealth because there's people who are slaving like working under the table jobs or working minimum wage sitting and living right next to people who are making six-figure salaries or they're millionaires or something it's not uncommon to see Lamborghinis and Ferraris driving on the road right next to 40 year old Toyota Corollas and things like that it's kind of interesting because the life I, that I lived in Vietnam I feel like is a poorer life than the living conditions in California however in California because I'm right next to super rich people I feel poorer in comparison so those were some of the differences that I've personally experienced in my younger life living in Vietnam versus living in California I hope you guys enjoyed this video thank you so much for watching